Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be talking about V12 engines. Now these are some of the smoothest running engines out there used by companies such as Ferrari, Lamborghini and the other exotics out there. So let's just talk a little bit about how this engine works and some of the advantages and disadvantages. Now the orientation of the V in a V12 engine can be at any angle because an inline six cylinder engine is inherently balanced and a V12 is simply two inline six cylinders mated together to a common crankshaft. So let's talk about the firing interval. Now calculating that we have four times, that's the number of strokes, times 180 degrees divided by the number of cylinders. That gives us a fire every 60 degrees of the crankshaft rotation. So very smooth power delivery. Uh, you're gonna have two times as many power strokes per revolution of the crankshaft as an inline six cylinder. So two times the overlap and that's just gonna give you a very smooth power delivery. So let's look at a V12 engine layout. This is from a Ferrari. Uh, they like to get a little clever with their numbering system, so they go 1 through 6 on the left and then 7 through 12 down from the back towards the front. So the firing interval, 1, 7, 5, 11, 3, 9, 6, 12, 2, 8, 4, 10. And you'll notice that goes back and forth each time, so that gives it that smoothness and keeps an even exhaust pulse on both sides. Now one thing I want to talk about uh, in this video, rather than going into balancing, which I've already done in my inline six cylinder video, basically the balance of a V12 engine is uh, pretty much perfect, and the benefit it has over an inline six cylinder is that it has more power strokes per revolution of the crankshaft, so better, smoother power delivery. So what I want to talk about in this instead is the benefit of using smaller pistons. So in this example, I'm going to have an inline six cylinder, which is going to be a six liter engine, or a 6 liter V12 engine. And to keep things simple, I'm going to make both of these square cylinder bores. So both the bore and the stroke are the exact same. Now we're going to be spinning these two at 6,000 RPM, and we're going to kind of look at the difference of the uh, piston speed of these two engines to kind of prove a point of how using smaller uh, displacement cylinders can be beneficial. So we know how to calculate the volume of a cylinder. Volume equals pi r squared h. Now in this case, r is uh, 1 half d, and h is equivalent to d of this cylinder. So d being the diameter of the cylinder, since the bore and the stroke are the same. So we can say this is equal to pi times d over 2 squared times d, or pi d cubed over 4. Now we know that the first cylinder has 6 cylinders and 6 liters, so each cylinder is going to be 1... Uh, one liter, so 1,000 centimeters cubed equals pi d cubed over four. We know that d1 equals 10.84 centimeters, so the stroke of cylinder with the six liter in line six is 10.84 centimeters. Now, what's the stroke of the smaller uh, cylinder, which is in the V12? So 12 cylinders, six liters, divide that out, you get 500 centimeters cubed per cylinder. Set that equal to pi d squared or pi d cubed over four, and d two, which is the diameter of the second one, or the height of the second one, bore stroke, is 8.6 centimeters. So as you can see, it's smaller than here. Now, the reason why we did that math is to calculate the average piston speed of each of these. And by calculating the average piston speed, basically there's a limitation on engines of this. So your piston can only move so fast. And if you've watched my video on average piston speeds, I get a little bit more into detail on that. So average piston speed equals two times the stroke times the revolutions per second. So for our engine one, the average piston speed will equal two times 0.1084 meters times 6,000 divided by 60. That gives us a average piston speed of 21.68 meters per second. For our engine number two, 2 times 0.086 meters times 6,000 divided by 60 equals 17.2 meters per second. So as you can see, the piston and the V12 engine both have the same cylinder uh, dimensions relative as far as they're both square, both the bore and stroke are the same. However, obviously the pistons in the V12 are smaller, and because of that, the pistons will travel slower. And because they travel slower, that means you can rev them to a higher RPM. So if you were to increase the second engine cylinder to 7,500 RPM, its average piston speed would be 21.5, which is still beneath this one, even when this one's traveling at 6,000 RPM. So basically what I'm saying is by using smaller pistons, you can increase the limitation of how fast you can rev your engine. 
So that's one of the benefits of these V12 engines, is you can make them fairly high revving if you want to. Now you can do the same thing with other engines and simply just decrease the stroke, but then you're going to be decreasing the displacement. So that's why I kind of did this back-to-back -back comparison of, you know, one engine versus another engine based on the layout alone. So, advantages of a V12 engine. Well, it's two inline six cylinders made into a common crank, so it's inherently balanced and because you've got more power strokes, it's going to be smoother power delivery than an inline six cylinder. Uh, so that's the next one, smooth power delivery. You've got a ton of overlap between the pistons, so plenty of smoothness in the engine. Less counterweight on the crankshaft means it's freer revving. That's just because it's balanced. And also you can use small pistons or have high displacement or a combination of the two and create big power with these massive V12 engines. Now the disadvantages, cost, of course it's going to be expensive. Think of all the moving parts. Now speaking of moving parts, that leads to complexity, uh, and also the size and weight of this engine are going to be disadvantages. Now if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.